Hi guys, how's it going? So today's video is going to be on the Magic 14. These are 14 fundamental skills that are going to make you a better pilot. They are going to give you more versatility in your ship, help you fit them better, and give you more stuff like capacitors, CPU, and power grid. Um, uh, my apologies for the fact that there hasn't been a video for a while. I will get into that towards the end of the video. However, ultimately, I want to try and get this into this information as quickly as we can so that you're not sitting around waiting. So if you're interested to know what's going on with the channel and what's been going on, stick around to the end. Otherwise, uh, if the video has been helpful, hitting subscribe would be fantastic. And hitting the like button lets me know that it's been helpful. So we'll go ahead, we'll jump onto the uh, onto, onto Eve now and uh, we'll go from there. So, three, two, one, go. Okay, so we're gonna cover off the 14 fundamental skills that you need to pilot any ship in EVE. These are skills that you need to focus on immediately. They need to be a priority for you, whether you're a new player, a returning player, or someone that's playing the game and and you're, you're, you're having issues with fittings and capacitor and, and things like that. These skills will be vitally important. There are further skills that you can expand on beyond this, but these are the fundamental building blocks to you flying any ship in EVE, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll open up our character sheet. And we're gonna pick the first category in this list. Now, this isn't the order in which you need to train these. For that, I've got a link in the description below that will give you a skill plan. This will tell you which ones to train and in what order so you are maximizing the most out of your ship as soon as possible. For the sake of this video though, I am gonna go through them in the order they are in on the character sheet just to make things faster. So, the first one that we're gonna look at is Spaceship Command. Now this gives you a flat 2% bonus to all ship's agilities. All ship's agility. That is, 2% per level. So at maximum level, you are getting a 10% flat bonus to your agility. This is important because it's gonna help you align and get into warp faster, which could be the difference between you escaping from a gank or getting to a PVP kill. It could also be the difference between you living and dying in a mission or surviving an NPC rat in a belt. It is a core skill that is really important and is going to aid in the life or death of you and or someone else. So training this to as high as you can is important. Now, I am aware that depending on your clone status, depends on how far you'll be able to train these. What I can tell you is to train them to the maximum that you've got available. So if you are an alpha and you can only train, for instance, Spaceship Command to level four, train it to level four. If you are an Omega, train it to level five. If you're interested in trying to get to a mega status and you haven't got it already, there's a link in one of the corners, I'm not sure which, but there's a link in one of the corners that will give you a guide on how to do this as an alpha. And then following that, there is also one that will show you how to do it as an omega. And I'll leave a link for both of those videos in the description as well. So the first one that we want to focus on is Spaceship Command, and you wanna train that to level five or level four. The next one that we want to be focusing on is navigation. Inside navigation, we'll go for the first one, which is, ironically, navigation. This is a 5% per level sub-warp ship velocity bonus. This essentially means how fast your ship, the little speedo at the bottom down here, how fast that goes. Now, if for instance, you only do 100 meters a second, training this to level five is going to give you a 25% increase to that speed. So that is 125 meters a second. Now, obviously, depending on the ship you're in, depends on what that top speed looks like, but this is ultimately going to mean you move faster. So this is a, a, an important skill. The faster you move, the less damage you take. So training this to five will help with your survivability. It'll also help on the other side of things as well. If you're doing PVP, it means that you can get to your target faster without having to use additional um, modules like afterburners and micro walk drives. So training this to level five or your highest level depending on your skit or on your clone level is an important one to do. The next one you wanna do following that is evasive maneuvering. Again, training this to the maximum capability that you've got. This is again a 5% bonus, but this time it's to ship's agility. Now, we covered this off in Spaceship Command, the same principle applies. 
It's going to help you align and walk faster, which is going to be the difference between your ship living and dying or someone else's ship living and dying, depending on what you're doing and the activity that you're involved in. So again, training this high as you can, helpful skill. The next one that you wanna be training is warp drive operation. Yes, warp drive operation. This is a 10% reduction per level to the amount of capacitor that you use. Now, if for whatever reason you're a new player and you're not familiar with capacitor, essentially down here in the uh, center of your ship, you will see a capacitor. This essentially is a fuel bay. Now, the more things you've got running, the more fuel you're going to use. So when you go into warp, that requires X amount of fuel. So it goes and it takes that straight away from your capacitor. Now, if you haven't got a lot of capacitor to start with, you're in a frigate, and you've only got a limited reservoir of cap, this potentially means that halfway through a warp, you're gonna be stopping, so you're not gonna get to your destination, or ultimately, you will land at your destination and you won't be able to activate any of your modules, which again, could be the difference between you living and dying, depending on your activity. If you're going into a mission and you can't turn your tank on, you're going to die. If you're going into PvP and you're landing on top of a target, you're not going to be able to turn your guns on unless you're min um, You're not going to be able to turn your guns on because it requires capacitor. You're not going to be able to lock the target down because warp scramblers and warp disruptors require capacitor. So this is going to reduce the amount of warp, uh, the amount of fuel you need to use in order to get into warp. So this one, again, a vital, a vital skill that is going to mean that your your overall capacity usage is better. So again, training that one to five or whatever you've got uh, the option to do, great idea. Okay, following this, we're gonna go into engineering. Now we've got four in here, I think. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's four. Okay, so we'll go with the first one, which I think is capacitor systems operation. It is. So this is a 5% reduction in the amount of capacitor recharge time. So say for instance, hypothetically, your fuel bay that we were referring to down here takes 60 seconds to refill from empty. So you are flat out of cap. It takes 60 seconds for you to get your capacitor from nothing to full again. If you've got capacitor system operations trained to level five, this is a 25% reduction in that time meaning that it's only going to take you 45 seconds to train that uh, to it sorry 45 seconds to regain your capacitor instead of the full 60. we're going to use that 60 time frame quite a lot going forward so just bear that in mind um, but yeah ultimately this means that your reduction is 60 from 60 seconds is 45 seconds so as you can obviously imagine this is going to mean that your 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 modules are going to last longer you're going to be able to fire your guns for longer. You're going to be able to walk for further. So there are a lot of options there. So training that one, again, a really good a really good one to focus on. Next one that you want to worry about is capacitor management. This one is the amount of fuel you have in general. Again, you've got 100, you've got 100 units of fuel inside your capacitor. Training this to level five is going to give you 125 units of capacitor. This means you've got more cap to use, which means your cap, your, your ultimately your, your weapons and your tank are going to last longer. You can run your micro warp drive or your afterburner for longer. You can keep that point on a target for longer. So this gives you more fuel to use. So training this gives you that option. Um, the next two are important for another reason. And I had a lot of comments on my videos where people were having issues specifically around fitting. They couldn't get it to fit because of CPU issues or power grid issues and were having to offset that deficit with implants, which were costing 15, 20, 30, 40, 100 million in some cases. They were having to use really expensive implants to offset the fact that they hadn't got these skills trained. These skills will help you when it comes to fitting, okay? So, the first one is going to be CPU management. This is a 5% per level, so 25%, and once you've got to train to five, a 
bonus to the amount of CPU you've got available, which essentially means better fittings for the ship. Um, following that, you want power grid management. Power grid, similar to CPU, so 5% per level, 25% at max, uh, bonus to the amount of power grid you've got available in your ship. So, following that, we will go into armor, and we are going to go for mechanics. This is a 5% bonus to your structure hit points. This is essentially an EHP increase, uh, or, or an effect, effective hit point increase. The more hit points you've got, the more survivability you've got. The longer you will be around, but maybe that's the deciding factor between you living and dying in a fight, or the deciding factor between you getting out of a, getting out of a mission with your ship still intact, or evading a gank. So this one is, a, is, is an important skill to train if you're trying to keep your ship alive, okay? So the next one that you want to be doing is um, hull upgrades. Hull upgrades is again a 5% bonus to your armor hit points, which is great because it means that you've got that, that, that extended survivability again. However, it's not the only benefit. This is one of those ones where you have got other things that come out of training this to level five. This one specifically is going to grant you access to other modules. So cargo hold expanders, nanofibers, inertial stabilizers, uh, damage controls, these are things that are going to make you harder to hit, move faster, carry more, or tank longer. So training these, uh, training this to five is a really important one. It also gives you base access to tech two hardeners for armor, um, for armor hit points, and also bulkheads for your, for your structure as well. So this is a really versatile skill that, that covers a lot of different areas. And although it says specifically armor, it does complement other areas as well. If you're speed tanking, for instance, you use shields normally for speed tanking, and then you will have low slots filled with nanofibers and gyro stabs and stuff like this to essentially increase your maneuverability. So that is requiring hull upgrades in order to do it. So there you go, that's, that's, that's the armor section. Next, we'll go into shields. And again, two in here that we need to worry about. The first one is shield management, which is that one. This is a 5% flat bonus to your ship's shield capacity uh, per level, so 25% at max level. The reason why this is important is because it is going to give you more survivability. The more shields you've got, the longer your ship will survive. Um, now, the key difference in in the key difference with this is. In EVE, you've got three main things that divide your ship up. Structure, armor, and shields. Structure and armor both require active modules in order to redeem their health, their hit points to, to repair themselves. It requires an active module or a remote active module in order to repair itself. Shields, however, don't. Shields will repair quite happily on their own. You can be at no shields, and they will go all the way back up to 100% on their own. There are no external modules needed in order to do that. However, you can use external modules or on, on board modules in order to increase the rate at which that does repair itself, but it will fix itself on its own. This 5% uh, bonus to the ship's uh, shield capacity actually increases what we call its peak recharge rate, which is its passive it's the rate in which it passively recharges. The higher that number, the faster it recharges. So this is ultimately a really, or the, the, the higher that number, the more it recharges per, per cycle. So there you go. It's, it's an important one to have just at a base level. So getting this to five is a good idea. The next one is shield operation. Yes, shield operation. So this one, will give you a 5% reduction in the amount of time it takes for you to regenerate your shields. We'll go back to that 60 analogy again. So it takes 60 seconds for your shields to go from zero to full. 
training shield operation to level five means that it's now only going to take 45 seconds for you to go from zero to full. So reducing the amount of time that it takes for your shields to get back up to full means that potentially the less damage you're going to take because this is an ongoing thing. It doesn't have to wait to get to zero to regenerate. It can be at any point, but it will just keep trying to regenerate. So it means you're going to survive longer, which means that your hit points go up. It also could be the deciding factor between you living and dying in a mission or in PvP. So again, an important skill. Now, the last one is targeting. And we want two from here. Now, the first one is signature analysis. Now, the reason why this one's important is because it's going to dictate how fast you lock something. Now, again, we will continue to use the 60, uh, the, the 60 second timer. So, hypothetically, you're in your ship and you're trying to lock down a target and it takes you 60 seconds to lock them. If you train this skill to level five, you're going to reduce that by 25%. This means that it's only gonna take you 45 seconds. Now, I know 60 seconds sounds like a long time and to be quite honest, it is. If you're a new player or you're just returning, you're probably flying something that's maybe a cruiser size or a frigate or something like that. You're not gonna to have to worry about those longer lock times. Those are more, more catered towards sort of Titans and super carriers and stuff like that. Um, but um, this is still going to reduce the amount of time it takes for you to lock a target by 25%. That is a substantial difference and the, the, the advantage to that is if you're PvPing, it means you can lock your target down faster, which means you can you can stop them from being able to warp off. If you're doing missions or you're running dead sites and stuff like that, it means it's the difference between you being able to lock a target faster than someone else that's potentially in there locking the target and you getting the final blow, which means you get the loot. So these are that it, it, it has a secondary effect that will make things a lot easier it also means that running missions is a lot faster because you haven't got to wait for the lock time um makes drone management easier particularly with the drone changes coming um and you having to actually assign your drones damage and stuff like that this is going to make life a lot easier for you so target target locking speed is important so signature analysis train it to as high as you can get it the next one is long range targeting now, there are, the, the main reason that this one's important is because it dictates how far out your ship can lock. Now, hypothetically, you're in uh, a frigate. Your frigate has a base locking range of 20 kilometers. Well, the problem is most warp disruptors will go out to 25 kilometers. Most warp disruptors will actually go out to about 27, depending on the bonuses that they're getting, and various other modules will expand that even further. Various other ships will expand that even further. But if 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 you're being locked down by someone else and or uh, an NPC in a mission, and they've got you warp scrambled, you can't burn away from them and get out of their range because you can't lock outside of 20 kilometers. By increasing the amount of range that you've got available to lock from, this ultimately means you don't have to expose yourself to as much risk and potentially means the difference between you getting in and out of a fight. Uh, whether it is PvP or it is PvE, this is ultimately going to keep you alive because it means that you don't have to necessarily get into the thick of a fight to get into the fight. Hopefully that made sense. Now, like I said, there are other skills in here that will benefit you, that will improve on ship fitting capabilities, capacity usage, um, and, and, and module access. And I'm, I'm happy to go through them, but obviously the point of this video was to get the core skills down. These are the ones that are fundamental for everyone when you're trying to get into the game, either as a new player or a returning player. These 14 skills will dictate how well you fly any ship in the game. That doesn't necessarily change how good or bad you will be as a pilot, but it will, de it will define how good or bad you are at fitting your ship and using it properly. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that helped. So we'll jump over to the big screen and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cut this video short, but... Um, yeah, 
like I said, hopefully that's helped. I, mean, I, I really am hoping that's helped and it's, it's answered a lot of questions hopefully as well. So let's jump over to the other screen, shall we? Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if it was helpful, hitting the like button lets me know it was. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, hit and subscribe would be fantastic. At least that way you're up to date, you know, next when I've got another video out or what the situation is with regards to live streams and stuff like that. Um, now that we've got the video out of the way, I just want to give you an update as to exactly what was going on and why we haven't had any videos recently. Um, unfortunately, I, I have a medical condition that, that means I'm prone to having seizures and I don't have much control over that. I had a seizure and unfortunately ended up uh, snapping my collarbone as a result. And so I wasn't able to do much by way of movement um, up until now. Um, I've been doing physiotherapy and I don't have to wear the sling anymore, which is fantastic. Um, and it does mean that I can start getting back into my normal, my normal routine of uh, my video making, playing with my kid and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, things will be getting back to normal uh, pretty sharpish now. Um, with regards to the channel itself, there is a bit of a major update there. If you haven't seen the live streams and you're not aware, Essentially, um, I'm no longer streaming on Twitch. I am dedicating all of my time specifically and wholly to YouTube. So every Friday we will be doing a PvP stream, which everyone is invited to come along to. Uh, we limit it to 25 people per fleet. Um, and essentially it's a live event. Everyone comes along, they join in. I give you a ship, you get in the ship, we go out, we get a kill. Once everyone's destroyed, we get new people into the fleet and we go out again. And it literally goes like that. Uh, last Friday we got about two and a half, almost three billion Eskin kills and hopefully we'll have a similar result um, this Friday as well. So if you're interested in that, we start forming up at about half seven uh, UK time and um, we tend to try and aim to leave at about half eight just because getting everyone round up and into place can take a little while. Highly recommend joining the public channel if you need to know the details for the ship and the location from where we're gonna be setting off from, and at least that way you've got somewhere to kind of work from. So, um, with regards to the content on the channel, excluding the Eve stream, I do plan on releasing at least one Eve video a week. Now, I am gonna to have to kind of get myself up to a point where I've got a catalog of videos so that I can start uploading them regularly. So you will have to bear with me for the next couple of weeks while I start getting the, the, the footage recorded and the videos edited. I'm still learning how to do this, so it is taking me a little while to get used to, but I'm getting there. So um, my hope is to get at least one Eve video uploaded a week, then one Eve stream every Friday, I'm then gonna be uploading a secondary video that's not necessarily gonna be Eve related, but it is gonna be some kind of game related or something that I'm doing at the time related. So um, new games that I'm working on at the moment, content that I'm working on with other creators. Um, someone's asked me to do a video on the man cave and show you around here and what it looks like in here from like the perspective other than this little square that we're in right here um, and things like that. So. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more content coming and it's just it's not just going to be Eve related. So hopefully you're going to enjoy that as well. Um, and any feedback that you've got would be fantastic. Um, links for everything are in the description below. So Discord, uh, merch, uh, public channels, everything that you could possibly need is in the is in the description below. So hopefully that helps. But that is going to be it for me for this video. So um, have fun, fly safe, and I will ultimately see you all on the next one. Till then, bye!